Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to our online worship at St Michael's for this first Sunday of Advent. And before we begin, a very happy new liturgical year to all of you. Uh, it may be a small thing to celebrate, but I think we have to take everything we can get at the moment. So before we begin with our worship, uh, just a couple of notices. First of all, to say that all being well, it looks like from next week we will be able to worship back in church, in person, uh, alongside our live stream for those who continue to watch online. Do keep an eye on the website to make sure that that is the case. The final guidance hasn't been published, but we're expecting to be back in church on Sunday the 6th. Also on Sunday the 6th, uh, we're hoping to have our bags of comfort and joy ready and packed and waiting for people to go and distribute them. So uh, if you would like to, we'd love for people to take two or three to hand out to their friends and neighbours uh, and to offer a gift of comfort and joy throughout Christmas. Um, if you would like to collect them on Sunday and you're here in person, that's a good time. Otherwise, there will be some just instant Michaels for the rest of the week. Do drop by and pick them up uh, and give them out to your friends and neighbours. Also to say, along with our Christmas plans, uh, the angel knitting has been going on in great strides. We've so far got about 800, uh, and it looks like we're aiming for about 1,000. So keep knitting. The deadline is Monday the 7th of December, uh, and if we can get to 1,000 angels, I think that will be quite an accomplishment. So thank you to all those who have knitted, uh, and thank you to all those who are still knitting. Uh, a final notice. And to say that Colin Trimpton, as you know, died recently. His funeral will be on Tuesday the 1st of December. Uh, there'll be limited numbers at that, but please do pray for Nelly and the family uh, as they remember Colin together on Tuesday. And so we turn to our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. So this morning is the first Sunday of Advent, a time where we remember the church's great wake-up call, uh, to calling us to rouse from our slumber, to watch and wait for Christ in expectation that he comes among us. So perhaps in our worship over these few weeks, this might be a time to look with fresh eyes on all that we do, to rediscover the ways that Christ makes himself known through these weeks of Advent, to allow them to disrupt and disturb our normal patterns as we wake from sleep and watch with Christ. And we begin by doing that this morning by lighting our first Advent candle. Uh, this one symbolises the patriarchs of old. And so we pray this prayer and light the first of our Advent candles. God of Abraham and Sarah, and all the patriarchs of old, you are our Father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth, to make our hearts ready for your Holy Spirit, to make his home among us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. Amen. And we pray together. Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, be born in our hearts this Christmas, be king of our lives today. Amen. So we turn to our prayers of repentance, acknowledging that Christ isn't always king of our lives, acknowledging that we sometimes fall into slumber and allow our hearts to become dull. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in that light, we confess our sin. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we sing now that great Advent carol, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's among my favourite carols, and we sing of the coming of Christ. So let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, 
in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Pat will read our Gospel reading for this morning. Alleluia, Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Many years ago, when I worked in Logan Government, training to become an accountant, I had to spend some time gaining experience in the audit section. There I had a colleague, another Paul, whose job was to manually check the monthly mileage claims of all the employees of the council. It was one of the most boring occupations I have ever known. And as he waded his way through unending claims, Paul had honed a very special skill. As he sat at his desk, he had taught himself how to sleep with his eyes open. It was possible to walk right up to his desk and he would never even blink. And so I often think about Paul when I read this little parable we've just heard. The first from Mark's Gospel as we begin this new church year. We hear of a householder who has a number of servants. As he is preparing to leave for a trip abroad, the householder called them together and gave each of them a job to do. He urged them to be responsible saying, when I return, I want to find you awake. And he singles out the doorkeeper for a special warning. 
Jesus' story ends there with that warning. Keep awake, ringing in our ears. So let's just concentrate on the doorkeeper for a few moments. Perhaps the greatest danger facing him is not so much that he may fall asleep on the job as that he might grow accustomed to it. In the beginning, he is all excited about the task, honoured that the boss has placed so much trust in him. He loves the uniform. When he puts it on, he feels he really is somebody. He is conscientious to the point of being scrupulous. It is not so much a job for him as a labour of love. But time goes by. Opening and closing doors can get very monotonous, even more so perhaps than checking mileage claims. The novelty wears off. Slowly but surely, the dust of habit begins to accumulate on him and on his world. A deadly routine takes over. He is still responsible, still unfailingly at his post, but he is merely going through the motions. The initial love and enthusiasm have evaporated. His heart is simply no longer in it. When the master returns, he will undoubtedly find him at his post. He will be awake but he will not be alive in the truest sense of the word. He will be dead, for he has lost his soul. Habit, you see, gradually deadens us, and in the end, it snuffs out all life. We get sunk in ruts of tradition and conformity. We forget we once had dreams as we sit in our armchairs and become increasingly judgmental. And what happens in ordinary life can happen in our Christian life too. We can get into a deadly routine with the result that we turn into Christians by habit only. We simply go through the motions. We take part in rituals that have lost their freshness and their meaning. Although it should be said that common worship has, to an extent, helped to keep us fresher and more alert. But we don't really hear the scriptures anymore. It just goes in one ear and out the other. The true face of Jesus gradually vanishes from our sight. We forget we once had dreams. So what is the solution? Well, we need to be disturbed from time to time. And this is where Advent comes in. Advent issues a great wake-up call to us. It provides us with an opportunity to shake off the dust of habit, and to let Christ come alive in our hearts once more. It reminds us that we used to have dreams. The Lord is coming. We don't know when, but we must be ready. We must be awake. We must remember to dream dreams. The French poet Charles Puguy wrote these words entitled God's Dream. The Lord God said, I myself will dream a dream within you. Good dreaming comes from me, you know. My dreams seem impossible, not too practical 
nor for the cautious man or woman. A little risky sometimes, a trifle brush perhaps. Some of my friends prefer to rest more comfortably in sounder sleep with visionless eyes. But from those who share my dreams, I ask a little patience, a little humour, some small courage and a listening heart. I will do the rest. Then they will risk and wonder at their daring, run and marvel at their speed, build and stand in awe at the beauty of their building. You will meet me often as you work in your companions who share the risk, in your friends who believe in you enough to lend their own dreams, their own hands, their own hearts to your building, in the people who will stand in your doorway, stay a while, and walk away, knowing that they too can find a dream. There will be sun-filled days, and sometimes a little rain. A little variety, both come from me. So come now, be content. It is my dream you dream. My house you build, my caring you witness, my love you share. And this is the heart of the matter. And so, happy Advent, happy new church year. Stay awake. And don't forget to dream. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So Richard will lead us in our prayers of intercession. Come Lord, fill us with your presence, that we may proclaim your peace. Lord, make us aware, alert to your coming, that we may reveal your glory in all the world. We pray for those who walk in darkness, that they may see your light. We think of all whose lives are clouded with troubles and pray that they may behold your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord, be known in your church, for without you we have no message, we have no power. We pray for your church here in Annick and across the world. We pray for our Bishop Christine and our new Archdeacon Catherine. For Mark Rowe as he prepares to be ordained as bishop, for Paul, Gerard and all who provide ministry and leadership here. 
we thank you for the fellowship we can share with each other, even though it has to be across the internet or by phone at the moment. We look forward to being able to restart public worship in church next weekend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord, and give peace to your world. Disperse the clouds of war and violence, of calamity and disaster. Let your power and glory be revealed to the nations. We pray for the continued negotiations between the UK and the European Union, that they will be able to find a good way forward for us after the end of this year. We pray for all who live in the USA as they prepare for a new president. We thank you for the work and dedication of all working to develop vaccines for COVID-19 and to find better treatments for those suffering from this awful disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord, be known in our homes, that they may reflect your love. Come in our workplaces, that they may reflect your glory that we may be fully aware of others and sensitive to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord, to all who are unable to cope at this time, to all who are weighed down with troubles, those who fear for their jobs, those who feel lonely, those who are tired, we pray for all who are sick at this time, that you will be with them to give them your comfort and love. Among our friends, we pray for Peter Sutcliffe, Janet Baxter, Mary Potts, Aidan Ridley, Angela Corti, Tegan Hudson and Nora Willis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord of our salvation, save us and we shall be saved. We pray for friends and loved ones departed. We give thanks for the lives of Anne Brown, Colin Shrimpton, Marion Cox and Kit Thomas. We think of all who have died with no one else to pray for them. And at the anniversary of his parting from us, we remember Wilfred Cully. May they rejoice in the fullness of your presence and your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord, come down, come in, come among us. Enter into our darkness with your light. Come fill our emptiness with your presence. Dispel the clouds and reveal your glory. Come refresh, renew, restore us. Come Lord, come down, come in, come among us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come now to share in the peace of God together. Once again, though we can't share this in person, uh, we find ways to share it, whether through the comment box or through a simple gift of a prayer of peace. So we share in the peace. May the God of peace make you completely holy, ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. So we come now to share in communion together this act, this ritual that we so often take for granted that we can walk through as if in a sleep.
So perhaps this morning allow this time as we gather around Christ's table to draw us once again into wakefulness, to lead us into God's dreams and to allow him to reveal what it is that we do as we gather around this table and are fed by the grace of Christ. Look upon us in mercy, not in judgment. Draw us from hatred to love. Make the frailty of our praise a dwelling place for your glory. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world, to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Michael, Paul and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
So even though we only receive these gifts spiritually, yet still draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. So let us pray. O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful, as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service, and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So our service this morning draws to a close. And as you go out into the rest of this week, may you remain watchful and awake, waiting for the signs of Christ coming among us. And so we're sent out with this acclamation, waiting for Christ, with a blessing and in Christ's peace. So, with love and compassion, come, come Lord Jesus. Jesus. With judgment and mercy, Come, Lord Jesus, in power and glory. Come, Lord Jesus, in wisdom and truth. Come, Lord Jesus. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and all those whom you love, this day and always. Amen. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.